Thanks for joining us on our streaming service for your first alert avalanche forecast. I'm your first alert meteorologist, Callie Zanandri. And joining me now is Brian Lazar from the Colorado Avalanche Information Center. Brian, over the weekend, an avalanche caught and carried a group, even briefly burying one rider. Can you walk me through what happened? Yeah, and I think you know the best way to do that is to just kind of show some of the video footage. So here's a point of view kind of, and you can see that this rider got swept down in a slab avalanche, a wind slab avalanche, about a foot thick. And so this is classic kind of wind slab behavior. You can see as his friends were going down to try and help him, they triggered the remainder of that slab, which we call hang fire. This did wash this person into the trees where they uh, dislocated their shoulder. Fortunately, they were able to reduce that in the field and they all got back to the trailhead without any major injuries or worse. Brian, what are the biggest takeaways from this incident that backcountry users should learn from? There's a couple key takeaway points. One is that this group did see signs of instability on their ascent route. So they were aware of the avalanche problems and they did notice some stiffer wind drifted snow and saw localized cracking on their ascent. And we always warn about this in the avalanche forecast. You know, when mother nature is giving you clear signs of instability, it's often a really good signal to move to uh, uh, more wind sheltered terrain or more gentle slopes. The other was that this group, you know, didn't make manage their progression downhill um, as they intended. And this is a common contributing factor to avalanche accidents. Um, they ended up kind of doing a little bit of leapfrogging and put that person who got swept into the trees lower down on the slope that they intended to be. Um, and this is not, this is, you know, a common mistake. And it's really highlights the fact that when you're out traveling with your partners, that you have very clear communication and that you know how you're going to manage a piece of terrain and travel through it. And in this case, that communication did break down, which they acknowledged in their report to us. Now, this group did share their experience in a field report. Why is that kind of transparency so valuable to the avalanche community? Yeah, I really do want to applaud this group for sharing um, a mistake. I mean, it's hard for us as people to share things that we've done wrong. Um, you know, there's embarrassment. There's also fear of, you know, being publicly shamed on things like social media platforms. And this group was brave enough to share that experience, which is key for a few reasons. One, it's invaluable information for us as avalanche forecasters. But two, um, it really does, you know, illustrate the kinds of avalanches that, you know, we were warning about and provides a really good example for the public at large. So this is a public safety contribution for not only us, but the public. Now, are we seeing an uptick in human triggered avalanches? Well, we did see an uptick, you know, starting on Friday. So we had, you know, five people caught in four separate incidents. Fortunately, these were mostly on the small side and we only, you know, had a couple minor injuries where everyone else was able to, you know, walk away unscathed. Um, so, you know, a little bit of new snow, some pent up demand and some strong winds led to, you know, a rash of mostly wind slab avalanches. With beautiful weather drawing people into the mountains, what's your key message for anyone heading out over the next couple of days? Yeah, so things are going to change. Um, one little piece of depressing news is that we are, you know, right at um, all-time low at statewide average snowpack right now. That red line is a daily time series of low snowpack, and you can see that black line is this year, and we are kissing that red line right now. With a week of pretty dry, warm weather coming in, we're likely to set some all-time low snowpack. In terms of uh, avalanche conditions, it means that the wind slab avalanche, like this one, which was another one. One of those incidents on Jones Pass, similar to the one we just showed in Rocky Mountain Park, is going to drop off the radar. And that does leave us with this persistent slab avalanche problem, which is going to be with us for a while. Um, so, you know, we keep talking about these north and east facing slopes, particularly at the higher elevations, being problematic. That snowpack structure is not going away. The likelihood of triggering an avalanche is very slowly declining, you know, in the absence of new snow. But you can see the size or the potential consequences that of these avalanches are not changing at all. Um, and so what we're dealing with is a snowpack structure that's got buried weak layers. So this says facet layers, that's just um, a particular kind of weak layer that sticks around in the snowpack for a long time. The snowpack structure is not the same everywhere you go in the state, but the key point is that we've got buried weak layers both in the middle of the snowpack and down near the ground, and that's gonna produce these kinds of avalanches that are really you know, kind of hard to manage. So here's one near um, Aspen, where you can see this one broke on weak layers near the ground. 
Um, here is an avalanche uh, that was near the Eisenhower Tunnel on Mount Trelease. You can see the person in the moving debris for scale, and this is a classic behavior of persistent slab avalanche. The person was on the slope and the avalanche broke well above them and then took them for the ride. So these avalanches can break across terrain features, be triggered from a distance, and uh, you know break above you. And here's a natural avalanche that occurred on Mount Baldy, which is near Crested Butte, and this is uh, triggered just from some little wind drifting. And so we're going to see a decline in the amount of obvious signs Mother Nature is giving us. While you know earlier in the season we were really focusing on audible collapsing and shooting cracks, those are still going to remain obvious signs of instability, but those signs are going to decline in volume. So you may not see as much shooting cracks, you may not hear as much audible collapsing or woofing, and your first sign of unstable snow may be triggering an avalanche. Now you've said there are places people can travel safely. How do folks identify safer terrain versus higher risk terrain? Yeah, and despite the wind slab avalanche problem going away, the most dangerous slopes remain those that harbor wind drifted slabs from prior snow and wind events. And so, you know, you can essentially check your forecast, look for the distribution of that persistent slab avalanche problem, and those uh, aspects that are not highlighted, mainly those southerly facing slopes, southwest, particularly at lower elevations, do offer some safer riding options. And why are some of those normal signs that Mother Nature provides just going away? Why aren't we seeing those? Well, because we're not, we haven't loaded the snowpack. It's adjusting to its last round of snowfall and wind drifted uh, and wind drifted snow. So just time is allowing those weak layers to slowly heal, and the snowpack is gradually getting deeper. So as those weak layers get a little bit deeper in the snowpack, they provide less obvious signs of instability. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Brian, and we will see you back here next week for your first alert avalanche report. Thank you.